Welcome to this video on real-time digital audio processing with SCP32 microcontrollers. In this video, we'll be looking at the tremolo effect. We'll go over the hardware platform briefly, we'll look at tremolo effect theory, and then how to implement the tremolo effect in real-time in C on an STM32 microcontroller. We'll also add variability in our tremolo, so being able to change the effects parameters, where we'll do a system analysis, both in the time and in the frequency domain, using a Digilent ADP3450 mixed signal oscilloscope. Then I'll plug in my guitar and have a little play around with our new tremolo effect system. If you're new to this series of videos, I strongly urge you to watch the first and the second videos in this series. They're titled Digital Audio Processing with STM32, and the first video is the main one which gives you an introduction of the hardware and software setup, as well as shows you how to perform some basic low and high pass filtering. The second video on the channel as well is regarding notch filters. Before we continue, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Altium and thank them very much for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to try an Altium designer for yourself, you can go to altium.com forward slash yt forward slash fills lab to get yourself your own free trial. I also have various Altium designer videos on my channel if you'd like to learn how to use this tool. As shown in the previous videos, this is the hardware platform we'll be using. This is a PCB I designed myself containing an STM32 F4 microcontroller, an audio codec, analog front ends, power supplies, USB connections, and so forth, and fairly small as you can see in comparison to this one euro coin. I fitted this PCB rather crudely into this electronic guitar pedal enclosure, so I have an input jack, output jack, various potentiometers and switches to be able to change my effects in real time, as well as a foot switch to turn this effect on and off. This PCB and pretty much all of the PCBs you see on my channel were produced and manufactured by JLC PCB. If you'd like to get a similar PCB made for yourself, I'd recommend you to go to jlcpcb.com and also my GitHub repository at github.com forward slash PMS67. If you navigate to my repositories and then find the LED DSP audio system module, also I made a video on this, I provide all of the necessary design as well as manufacturing files so you can order these at jlcpcb.com. And here's the effect pedal enclosure, connected with an ST-Link version 2 for debugging and programming. I have my guitar input and outputs plugged in. On the other side, I have the potentiometer and switches. And I'll be using this Analog Discovery Pro with the oscilloscope capability as well as the wave gen capability to do some time and frequency domain analysis. We've discussed this in previous videos, but here again is the hardware platform block diagram. I have my processor with USB and serial wire debug connection through which I'll be doing the programming. I use the ADC on this processor to measure my control signals, so from potentiometers and switches. I have various power supplies for the analog and digital sections. I have my main codec that includes my ADCs and DACs, and they stream data via I2S, which is very similar to SPI. I can also configure this codec via I2C, and of course, I need some analog front ends, which in my case, I just perform a bit of filtering and impedance conversion. So I can plug my guitar in, send it through the codec, process it, and send it back through the codec, and then to, for example, a guitar amplifier. In this video, we'll be looking at the tremolo effect. And the tremolo effect is one of the most basic non-linear modulation effects. Effectively, it's periodically changing the volume of an incoming audio signal. And you can hear that effect quite well on Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day on the intro guitar. It's illustrated on the right here. Let's say we have a fairly high frequency audio signal, we'll call that X of N, and we modulate that with this LFO or low frequency oscillator signal G of N. So effectively, we're simply multiplying this by this signal and then getting this output signal. So you can see our original audio signal has its volume or amplitude changed or modulated by this low frequency oscillator signal. So this is non-linear because we are performing a non-constant multiplication. The LFO signal is typically on the order of 100 hertz, maybe a bit more or less. The LFO signal can be sinusoidal, triangular, or pretty much any waveform you desire to achieve a certain effect. In this video, we'll be using a triangular waveform because this is easiest to generate and least computationally expensive. As you can really see, the tremolo effect is essentially just amplitude modulation. And here's a tremolo block diagram. Effectively, we have our input signal X of N, we have our sampled or generated LFO signal G of N, and we have an output Y of N. Because we are in the discrete time digital domain, everything is sampled. So we generate our sampled LFO signal, so a sinusoidal or triangular wave or whatever you desire, at a specific LFO frequency. And again, we'll call that G of N. Our tremolo effect, we can vary either by varying this LFO frequency, but we typically also have a second parameter, which is called the depth. And I've denoted this by the Greek letter delta. And the depth can be anywhere between zero and one. 
Essentially, the depth determines the strength of the effect. If delta is all the way at 1, we get maximum modulation. If the depth is 0, we get the basic audio signal at the output. In essence, the tremolo effect multiplies the incoming audio signal with the LFO signal using this depth parameter to vary the strength of the effect and make sure the output is bounded between minus 1 and plus 1. So as you can see here, these are constant coefficient gain blocks. If delta is 1, this block goes to 0 and this block goes to 1. So all of our input signal is fed into the multiply block and multiplied with the LFO and then passed to the output. On the other hand, if delta or our depth is 0, this block goes to 1 and this block goes to 0 and we get no multiplication with our LFO and all of our input signal X of N is then fed to the output over here. We can summarize this block diagram in a very, very simple equation. Effectively, our output at sample n is our input x of n at sample n times this function over here. So we simply have this 1 minus delta term as a constant multiplied by x of n, and we sum that with x of n times delta, our depth, times our modulating LFO signal g of n. So essentially, we have these two terms here, one with just the pure audio signal and one with the multiplication of the audio signal and the LFO signal. And this is really useful and very simple, and this is all we essentially have to implement in software. The question, however, is how do we create the LFO triangular waveform? So I've opted for a triangular wave because this is very simple. We don't have to compute, for example, sines or cosines. And this gives a pretty nice tremolo effect. The easiest way in my eyes to generate a triangular wave is simply use a counter. The way we do that is I've chosen to use my counter period to be a quarter wave period. So if we start our wave over here at zero, our wave repeats when we get over here. So we've done one cycle. Our counter then simply counts from the start of the wave to a quarter cycle of the wave. Using this information, we can then compute a constant called the counter limit. And the counter limit then is simply a quarter of the sampling frequency divided by the LFO frequency. All that we then have to do is count up from zero to that counter limit. Once we've hit a peak, we can count down the counter limit to zero and then count to the negative counter limit, count to zero, count to the positive counter limit, count to zero, and so on. And this is summarized in this block over here, kind of in pseudocode. We have a counter variable starting at zero, and we also have a counter direction variable starting at plus one. So we're counting from zero upwards. Every time we trigger this effect or want to create a new sample, we simply increment the counter. If we hit the counter limit, for example, the top here, we change the counter direction and count down. Once we hit the negative counter limit, so down here, we simply have to change the counter direction and count up again. And this is then all we need to create our triangular wave. We can now move over to stm 32 cubide and see how this is implemented in the C programming language. Here we are in stm 32 cubide and the main place where I program my stm 32 microcontrollers. I've created a tremolo.h header and tremolo.c source file, and we'll go through them step by step to see how we've implemented this tremolo effect. I have my tremolo effect struct over here, where I store the tremolo depth because we'd like to vary this. I have the various low frequency oscillator parameters, as you saw just now, the direction, the counter, and the counter limit. I'm also storing the sample rate because we'll need this if we want to recompute all of these LFO parameters, and I also store the effect output. This struct is then passed to all of the relevant tremolo functions, and I can use these variables when I call these functions. I always have an initialize function, so the first thing I do is call this initialize function to set up all of my LFO parameters, my depth, my sample rate, and so forth. Then I have two functions which change the parameters of this tremolo effect, so they change the depth as well as the LFO frequency. This is useful because I will be using the control settings later on, the potentiometers, to change the depth and frequency in real time. Finally, I have the most interesting function, which is the tremolo update function, which applies our tremolo effect to the incoming audio stream. So moving over to tremolo.c, which is our source file, we can then fill in our function prototypes. So our initialize function takes the depth, LFO frequency in hertz, and the sample rate in hertz. First thing I do is store the tremolo depth, then I store the sample rate, and compute the LFO parameters by calling our other set LFO frequency function. I would also like to clear the LFO counter and then set the LFO direction. So as we saw before from the slides, we start our counter at zero, and we start by counting upwards. And we also want to clear the output just to make it all nice. Then we have our set depth function. Essentially, all we're doing is checking the depth bounds. So it has to be between zero and one is what this is doing. And then we're storing this tremolo depth. The next function is then to set the LFO frequency. So we want to check the LFO frequency bounds, make sure it's positive, and also make sure that it's below or equal to the Nyquist limit, which is half the sample rate. Then, as we saw from the slides, we can compute our counter limit, so our maximum counter value, based on the desired LFO frequency, and that is simply a quarter of the sampling frequency divided by the LFO frequency. And this is all I'm doing here. 
Now, because our counter could have been out of bounds with this new counter limit range, we need to make sure that it is clamped within the new count limit range. And that's all I'm doing here. Now here comes our most interesting function, and this is the tremolo update function. We simply take in our latest input sample and we return the newest output sample. This is the equation we saw from the slides, which is the governing AM modulation or tremolo effect. Our output sample is our input sample multiplied by this block over here, which includes the triangular wave. So we've seen this over here, which is pretty much identical to our expression. And all we then need to do is then compute G of N. So essentially our LFO triangular wave output. And this is pretty simple. It's simply the LFO counter divided by the counter limit. This ensures we get a value of the triangular wave, which is bounded between minus one and plus one as shown over here. The next thing we need to do is of course, update our LFO with the triangular wave. So we check if we've reached a maximum of the triangular wave. And once we have, or if we have, we count down by changing the direction to minus one. Similarly, if we've reached a minimum, we want to count up again, and that's what we'd be doing here. And then of course, we want to increment the LFO counter with whatever direction we are moving in. And finally, we just return the output. And that's all there is to it. We've seen the whole setup of main not seen in the first and second video. All I have to do is include my tremolo header. I have various parameters which I can set, for example, what the maximum depth can be, what the minimum LFO frequency is, and I've set that just to be about 20 hertz. And the maximum LFO frequency is essentially 1000 plus 20 hertz. We have to declare our struct. And in our processing function, when we go through all of the input audio data, we simply have to call our update function to compute the newest output sample. Of course, we have to initialize our effects calling the init function, and this happens in int main. As before in the previous videos, every time we have control settings ready, so we've read the potentiometer values, we'd like to update the effect parameters. So one of my potentiometers controls the depth, and this is varied between zero and one. Again, using the set depth function, we have our output volume, and lastly, we have our LFO frequency in Hertz, which is determined by the last potentiometer. And this is simply a linear mapping. Our control setting goes from zero to one. We multiply that by the frequency scale, which I've set to be a thousand Hertz, and we make sure it's a minimum with this term over here. And then we call the set LFO frequency update function. And that's all we need to do. So I'll upload my code to the board. Then we'll use the Digilent Analog Discovery Pro to do some time and frequency response analysis, after which we'll look at some guitar demos as well. So I've got everything set up. I'm just gonna click this button to upload the code to the board. And we have the download verified successfully. And I can switch to my waveform software. So here I am in the digital waveform software. And as before, I will be using the wave gen to generate a simple sinusoidal signal, which I'll be feeding into the guitar effects processor and a scope to measure the output. So going over to my wave gen, I'm generating a sinusoidal signal, at one kilohertz with a one volt peak amplitude, and that's already running. And here now in the scope part of this software, I have channel one, which is yellow, which is my input channel, and channel two, which is not activated at the moment, is my output channel. So you can see I have my one kilohertz sine wave being generated here, and now I'll turn on my output channel. As you can see here, we have the sine wave, which is our simulated audio signal in the center, but it's being modulated up and down. So let me just change the horizontal time scale. And you can see in here, we have the high frequency sine wave, which is at one kilohertz internally, so our simulated audio signal. And we have this envelope, which is this triangular wave on the outside. So this looks like it's working with our amplitude modulation. I can play around with the depth setting first of all. So let me just decrease the depth. And as you can see, the triangular envelope is now decreasing. I can turn it all the way down and that gives us simply our sinusoidal audio signal. And then I can turn it up again to increase our depth. And as you can see, we're getting full modulation, if not over modulation like so. So let me just turn that down a bit. And now we can also test if we can do different LFO frequencies. So I'm gonna increase the LFO frequency now. As you can see, that's going closer together. We have a larger frequency of the triangular carrier and I can turn it down to get a lower LFO frequency. So this looks like it's working. I also have my volume control, of course, so I can turn that up like so, and I can turn that down. So this looks like it's working. We've performed amplitude modulation with a triangular carrier. We have our sinusoidal audio signal, our simulated audio signal being modulated in amplitude. We can change the depth and the LFO frequency. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go over and have a look at a frequency domain plot of this signal. So here I am using the spectrum analyzer feature. I've set my start frequency to be essentially zero hertz, so DC, and a center just a couple of kilohertz with a span of five kilohertz. So we're looking at channel two, which is the output of our system. You can see the noise floor here, and our main audio signal, because we have a zero depth, so all of the audio signals being passed through to the output over here, and this is centered at one kilohertz. 
Now I can increase my depth for a certain LFO frequency and just see what happens to the spectrum view. So as I increase my depth, you can see I'm getting essentially these modulation products, which seem to be, if I just de decrease my LFO frequency, symmetrically mirrored around my center frequency. So one kilohertz plus 500 hertz over here, and one kilohertz minus 500 hertz over here. So if I move my essentially modulation frequency, you can see these peaks are symmetrical on the side. And this is very characteristic, of course, of amplitude modulation. I can increase my depth of my modulation, and you can see these sidebands ever increasing. If I increase it even further, I get very, very strong modulation, even in fact so that my main audio signal is now almost buried in noise. Because we are using a triangular wave, we don't just have these sidebands, but we also have these harmonics appearing as well. So let me just turn down my depth, and here we go, and we get our center frequency, or essentially our audio frequency, back again. And as usual, I can shift my LFO frequency and make sure that works as well. And you can see all of the harmonics, the harmonic content moving around as well as I change the depth and the frequency. And this again shows that because we are generating new frequencies, this is a non-linear effect. With simply linear filtering or linear processing, we cannot generate new frequencies. So this is a quite nice little demonstration. But it looks like everything's working, so now let's plug in a guitar and see how this tremolo effect sounds. So here I have the code now uploaded. I have my LFO frequency can now be varied between about 1 and 20 hertz. So this of down here is my LFO frequency. This is my depth and my volume control. So now right now I have my depth essentially fairly low. If I can play with a guitar. It's fairly clean. So if I increase my depth, let's say, to, I don't know, about 75%. You can hear that characteristic tremolo effect. Now I can change my LFO frequency as well. It's fairly slow. And a bit faster. 